Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., from weatherist.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, and the commander of chaos. Happy Thanksgiving weekend, everybody. It's uh, 11 p.m. on this Saturday night. Time to talk about This Week in Weather. Lots to talk about in this edition, so let's get right to it. We'll be talking about the drought in the southeast U.S. and why it has developed and the connection it has to the overall pattern. We'll be talking about the beginning of the pattern to change here. Some rain showing up in the southeast and over the eastern U.S. over the next two weeks. A couple of different potential significant rain events. We'll take a look at December 2016. And of course, even though we are seeing some slow evolution in the pattern, there are still a lot of problems with the pattern before we can get really excited about the winter pattern setting up. So let's get started by taking a look at the drought map. Now this here has the U.S. Drought Monitor map from November 22nd. And of course, we can see lots of important things here. The most important is the, um, the drought area right in here, as you can see, which and of course, you notice the drought areas of drought, drought three and drought four. And of course, it's also quite dry in much of the Northeast and getting some dryness in here as well. But mainly it's the whole Southeastern area, which has seen uh, the significant drought um, over the last uh, couple of months, which has developed here. Now, this is a look at the overall pattern as of November 23rd. We have a couple of things to point out here. Call out the markets here. Obviously, this year is your polar vortex centered over Siberia. And then notice we also have one of these uh, omega ridges here. As you can see, that's an omega ridge. And another one right here, as you can see that as well again. And you can notice the uh, omega lines as I've, I've drawn them in here uh, over. Uh, let me get make sure my marker's up here. The omega, uh, you can see right like here. And another one, there's an upper low here over Spain and another omega ridge that way. So a lot of, of that uh, over... Uh, this is not really a, nor a, a, a negative NEO. Some people think this feature here is a negative NEO. It's not. This is actually referred to as a, as a, a thumb ridge. Uh, it's actually referred to as a North Atlantic thumb ridge. And the reason is because it looks like a thumb. So that's what it's not an NAO at all. People are going to make that mistake. So if you see that in some discussions, don't worry about it. The person doesn't know what he's talking about. And then over here, we can see the Arctic Oscillation um, is uh, negative right now because of the big high above normal heights here in the Arctic region. But the NAO itself is also uh, is also quite positive with a big upper low over Greenland. So a very mixed pattern here. And of course, we can see the hellacious Pacific jet stream still because of this intense polar vortex. These lines are very compacted. You see all the lines, how tight they are. And that produces a very strong jet streak all the way across into the Pacific into the West Coast. And notice how the pattern splits here like this, and like this. And of course, this produces a very dry conditions here over the southeastern U.S. and a very mild pattern for much of North America. So complicated pattern here a lot going on but important stuff to talk about nonetheless this is as of uh, november 23rd the jet stream pattern 250 millibars and what i want to point out here is look at this amazing pacific jet now this purple area red area that's 150 knots here folks that's pretty impressive same thing here look at this so as long as this specific jet as long as that pacific jet stream is streaking across from china and japan to the west coast it's going to get very hard for a ridge to form over the north and uh, into the Arctic Circle of Northwest Canada. This is very, very powerful, and it's very strong. And we can see, again, up 150, 160 knots. And that just makes it really difficult for the jet stream to change over over time. So we have to get that polar vortex to leave Siberia, and that'll allow the Pacific jet stream to relax, and the pattern will begin to change. Now, this is the, uh, the overall uh, 500 millibar pattern as of... Uh, Saturday, November 25th, and um, some important features here. Notice we actually have the, here's our negative, our Arctic oscillation is here. Uh, we actually have a negative NEO um, right in this area right here. Uh, so that's a good sign. But the problem is, is that the, the vortex is, look what this is, now it's over on that side of Russia. And we have this deep trough here. So even though we have a negative NAO and a negative uh, Arctic oscillation, the pattern here in the Pacific is so messed up that uh, the jet stream is actually uh, not the, the, the NAO in Greenland is not really helping the pattern. Uh, we have a little bit of a trough in the east, but this is still at a big ridge here. So the energy is coming down here like this and it's going up. And uh, 
you know this arctic oscillation this which negative is not very uh favorable we need to be a lot stronger and a lot further uh towards northern canada so that's a problem as well so all sorts of problems with the pattern here uh, in terms of getting into set up in the winter pattern. We've got to get the trough out of the eastern Pacific and on the west coast. That's just killing everything. And so far, we're not seeing any hint of that on the model showing up here. Uh, now, let's take a look at some of our uh, precipitation here over the last uh, a month. This is normal precipitation. How Look how amazingly dry it's been. 25% of normal over the past month. Very impressive. Uh, this is over the last uh, 14 days. Again, 5 to 25% of normal, a few areas, maybe close to 50. Uh, some good rains in New England and southeastern uh, New York State, but for the most part, quite dry over the Mid-Atlantic region. This is precipitation uh, relative to normal over the last week. Ugh, look how dry it's been. Unbelievable. Uh, and, you know, for November, it's a fairly wet month as things go as well. Uh, these are temperatures uh, since the beginning of November. Uh, quite warm over the Ohio Valley. Uh, close to normal over portions of Virginia, North Carolina, uh, lower Delmarva, places like that. But New England's been a couple of degrees above normal as well. Over the last two weeks, it has gotten cooler. I'm sure you've noticed that with many areas getting down to the 20s uh, on a couple of these mornings here over the last two weeks. And we can see some of these temperature anomalies. Uh, you know, this the green area here in West Virginia, that's minus four. This area in here in Southeast Virginia, minus six. So it has been getting cool. Now, New England's still staying fairly warm, but in the Mid-Atlantic region into the Ohio Valley has seen some temperatures turn to close to the normal over time. And the normal temperatures in the past uh, week, everybody has turned much cooler. Uh, you can definitely see that over Virginia, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, North Carolina, with temperatures anywhere running anywhere from uh, 4 degrees to 6 or 7 degrees below normal over the past week. Now, coming up here, uh, over the next uh, a couple of days here, the next 60 hours, we have this huge upper low which develops, and you can see it right in here, and many contours around this thing. And there are several pieces of energy here and here rotating around it. And, of course, that upper low is going to bring precipitation to the Dakotas, maybe even some snow in the south central Canada, but also a lot of rain. We can see what the surface map looks like here on the morning of uh, November 29th. A lot of rain moving into the Tennessee Valley and the Ohio Valley. And this here is the upper air map at 108 hours, which is valid, uh, I guess, late on the 30th in the morning of the 1st. And we can still see the upper low. And you can notice it's still right here. You see it hasn't moved. You can see the contours. It's still very impressive, very deep. But there's another big piece of energy right here and another one coming in right here. And that's going to cause another rain event to develop here. There is the December 1st. Uh, rain coming into the Ohio Valley, uh, the Tennessee Valley, into the Mid-Atlantic States, Pennsylvania. We have the high off the southeast coast. You can see that right here. Here's the high. And, of course, it's causing the, the tremendous southerly southeasterly inflow of heavy moisture from the Atlantic and the Gulf so this looks like a pretty significant rain event here for the drought area so this would be a big deal if this actually happens and I believe it will now if we look at the precipitation maps here this is the European on the left hand side for the next five days usually the European is drier than the GFS and that's not what we're seeing here look at the rainfall over the mountains of Tennessee that five, six inches of rain here, a lot of uh, two to four inch rains here over northern Alabama, northwest Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, western uh, West Virginia, western North Carolina. So, and the GFS on the right hand side, similar as well. So, impressive rain to say the least. Here is the uh, European uh, for the morning of December 2nd. Now, things look like they're beginning to change here a little bit. We have a, we still have our large upper low here. You can see right like this. And there's the, five, there's the upper low. The low is now off the coast. The cold fronts come through. We're getting some flow from the north here. So temperatures are turning colder. And there's a big system here in the southwestern states over California, which have to be watched. And um, what that does is uh, we can see what the temperatures look like here. This is on the morning of December 2nd. Uh, you can see these 850 temperatures finally getting cold here a little bit. Here's our zero line. I make sure I have the zero line set up just exactly right. Yeah, the zero line is right like this at 850. So a lot of cold air coming southward finally a little bit here. So that's kind of nice to see if you like cold air. And of course, who doesn't? Now, this here is the uh, GFS valid uh, day seven. And we can see the overall pattern. Let me just draw it in here. We have a split flow in the pattern. Notice we have one like this. And here's the upper low over Baja, California. And we have another flow coming in this way, driving the cold air in. 
So the question is, what happens to this upper low? Where does it go? Does it go east? Or does it go into the Great Lakes or what have you? Um, and what happens is it ends up tracking essentially due east. Now, the European at day 10 takes this upper low because it always, it often screws up systems in the uh, southwestern United States, moves into the Colorado Rockies, and you can see the, the, the jet stream to the north retreats. This is just complete crap. This solution here, it's not going to happen. But you can see here's the upper low, the jet stream is going like this. And this would make it very, very warm here over the plains in the Midwest. That that's not solution, not correct. And we can see that by taking a look at the European ensembles. Day 10, totally different pattern. Notice again, we have a very nice um, uh, negative uh, NAO right here and a trough on the West Coast and a trough on the East Coast. And the energy here is going to go this direction like this. So, and we also have this ridge developing over the Bering Sea. So, some changes going on in the pattern here by December 3rd. And the temperatures are fairly cold here, December 4th, December 5th, December 6th. Nothing spectacular, but definitely getting colder. Now, this is the overall pattern as of December 1st. And we can see we now have a negative uh, Arctic Oscillation and a negative NAO. And uh, we have upper low here over Michigan, of the Great Lakes. You can see this very nicely right here. And this ridge is driving towards Canada. So it looks like, and the polar vortex, which was here, is now trying to move towards the North Pole. Notice that the lines here are not nearly as tight. They're much more relaxed, so the Pacific jet appears to be weakening. So up through day five, it looks like the pattern is evolving. Things are going good. Let's go for winter, right? But it doesn't really hold, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, six to ten day, uh, the rains are coming up again. A second round of rains out of Texas and the Delta headed for the southeastern states and the Tennessee Valley. Significant rains of both models. Now, by day 10, we have a pretty good pattern here. But what happens is um, the uh, vortex moves back to the Arctic Circle. So the Arctic Oscillation ends up going back positive and if you look at all the graphs you'll see that the arctic oscillation is going after doing negative takes off in that direction goes positive and that's why this upper low appears over the vortex and that's just you can't have that that's you can't have the this uh big upper low over the north pole that's just, oh, that's almost always a, a positive arctic oscillation we have a trough on the west coast and we have this negative neo so the energy here just stays like this it goes uh, comes out of the west coast goes across the country and produces uh, wet conditions. Not particularly cold, but not particularly uh, dry either. And then we can see this big ridge here over the Bering Sea pushing towards Alaska. And that may be a bit of a change as well. Now that's got to have implications as well for the pattern. 11 to 15 day, we have now an Omega Ridge. You can see clearly the Omega Ridge. Let me highlight it so you can see it. This is it right here. And we can see the um, Omega symbol like this. And that does, that forces a trough over the Pacific Northwest and Southwest Canada. So that's going to allow a lot of really cold air and snow to build up in here. And eventually when the pattern changes, this cold air will come southward. So that's not necessarily a bad thing to have early in the winter. Now, uh, for winter weather lovers over the eastern United States, this is not a great thing. There may be a weak system here on uh, December 9th or 10th, a moderate system, but um, we still don't have a great pattern set up, shaping up yet. Um, getting there, but still not great. And in the 11 to 15 day, um, yeah, we can see the rainfall on the GFS is quite significant over the Tennessee Valley, over the drought areas. Another big rain event, not as much in the European, but fairly close to being similar. Now, on December 9th here, if we look at the regional map, we'll notice we have a uh, some sort of system here right in this area like this or maybe it's in the ohio valley and then here's our trough on the west coast so the energy is coming in this way and here's our block that's our um negative nao so as a result the energy has to go th this direction who streak right across the country and if we take a look at the next map we'll see it a bit larger sense again here's our big huge ridge developing over alaska and the bering sea and then we have our trough here and some sort of energy in this area right here and there's the negative NAO that way so and um, what happens is and you can take a look at the next image here it is the GFS uh, the evening of December 8th has a Midwest snowstorm for Iowa Minnesota Wisconsin maybe the eastern Dakotas December uh, in the morning of December 9th a Midwest snowstorm in the Great Lakes potentially Chicago as well and then, then the GFS takes it up into New York State, up towards Montreal, the St. Lawrence Valley. I would think this system is probably going to end up being here instead. Um, 
you know, this low would actually end up being there, but we'll see if that actually happens. That, like I said, so I do think this has some potential for New England to see the first good snow of the season for that area on December uh, 9th or 10th. Longer term, here's the European model of the weekly from a Thursday, and you can see that as of December 14th, um, you can see the big fe feature here. And this is going to continue to drive, I believe, in this direction. And, of course, that produces a trough here and allows the cold air to spill and form in this area. There's some sort of disturbance here in the northeast, which is leaving as of December 13th. So that might be another system. But overall, you can still see, you know, we still have this Omega Ridge, and that produces a big upper low here. You see what that does? And that causes the jet stream to tighten up here again, folks. And as a result, the Pacific jet remains fairly strong. So having that Omega Ridge, let me point this out again. So having the Omega Ridge here causes this to reform, and that causes the Pacific jet to tighten up here. So mid-December, it's not looking that favorable yet. It's not terrible. It's just not great. And if you look at our temperatures on the CFS, it's pretty chilly as well for mid-December. That's not a warm map. It's not severely cold, but it's not a warm map either. And if we look at December, finally, for the whole month, the CFS. Now, this is as of November 26th, so ideally the CFS should have some sort of clue of what December is going to look like. And we can see some interesting features here. First, notice the polar vortex is finally out of Siberia. It's in north central, or yeah, Siberia towards uh, moving a little bit closer towards Russia and uh, those uh, Bering Sea air, like, uh, uh, I guess, yeah, that would be, what sea would that be? The Kara Sea, yeah. And then, of course, in uh, we have the uh, N negative NAO in over here in Greenland. That's a good sign. No polar vortex here over the eastern U.S. yet. We're not seeing anything like that. There's no polar vortex here. We have some sort of ridge in this direction and a bit of a north north flow, bringing some cold air in. The mean trough is here in the Midwest and the Plain States for December. That's what this is showing. So it looked like a, it could be a pretty stormy month for the Midwest here in December, from what I can see. Um, not a great pattern for the East Coast, the Northeast. Not terrible, just not great. And if we look at it in more detail, we can see again, uh, looking at North America, notice here we have a, uh, there's, here's our, here's our uh, negative NEO, and over here is that deridged, as we can see, and that ends up producing um, the mean trough in this whole position like this, and that's where the best storms are going to be in December if the CFS is correct. Well, don't, it may not be, but that's what it looks like to me. So it's a step in the right direction, and we have to get the Pacific jet to break down. So uh, we'll see if, how that actually happens. And temperatures for December, very close to normal, uh, which that sort of pattern will not surprise me. And the precipitation, now precipitation does look pretty good on the East Coast uh, with normal temperatures. Some of this might be snow in the Midwest. Temperatures are a little colder. That could be snow. So, you know, December is not looking like a disaster, but it's not looking ideal or textbook for winter weather either. It's got some activity and some promise, but nothing to write home to mom about. And then finally, we take a look at January. It looks a little better on the CFS. This is just a guess here. I wouldn't get too excited about this. We are seeing a bit more of that ridge here in the northeast. Um, you know, ridges like this bringing more cold air southward, so that's better. Uh, the vortex is, we have now one polar vortex here, another one now in north central Canada, so that's better. And we have a southerly jet stream. So January has some potential, which we'll have to see if that actually shapes up or not. But definitely January's got some potential as well. And the temperatures for January do look colder for everybody. This is Meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.